Welcome to County Report This Week. I'm Sonia Burke. Thank you for joining us. With primary elections roughly six months away, campaigns are picking up steam. Six gubernatorial hopefuls were at a recent debate organized by the Committee for Montgomery. The candidates took turns laying out policy ideas in front of a packed house. Lorna Virgili was at the gathering. Lorna? Sonia, six out of the seven gubernatorial candidates showed up for this debate. Three Republicans and three Democrats. There were no fireworks, but they addressed several issues. Each took turns answering questions about economic disparity, diversity, affordable health care and retirement, laying out their ideas in front of nearly 600 leaders and asking for the vote in 2014. The strong support just about all the candidates about school, school construction in Montgomery County, the willingness to work with Montgomery County and to ensure that we continue to enhance our economic position in the state. I think all of them recognize very clearly that Montgomery County is the economic engine for the state of Maryland. With state and county elections approaching, the Committee for Montgomery decided to have this year's annual legislative breakfast serve as one of the first Maryland gubernatorial candidate forums of the election season. To have all of the gubernatorial candidates here to be talking about how important Montgomery County is to their overall vision and mission is a great step for us in the right direction. It was the first time that I had seen all of the candidates for governor up on stage. Of course, all three Democrats are good friends of mine. I know them well. But to see them in that setting and really auditioning for the state's top job, I was very impressed. And I really uh, congratulate all six candidates. Of course, my Democratic friends, um, I, I think really all uh, acquitted themselves very well. Despite being called the state's economic engine, no Montgomery County resident has ever been elected as Maryland governor. 2014 may be historic for the county as two candidates reside in Montgomery. We put forward a very uh, aggressive platform that is unapologetically progressive. We're tackling the middle income wage gap in a serious way. We want middle class families to earn more and be taxed less. We're out there making sure that we not just increase the minimum wage, but we have a living wage for families. People in, in, will get to know the candidates a little bit better. I mean, this audience knows me because I, I grew up in Montgomery County and I come to this breakfast every year. The audience did not know the other five people, and so they've gotten to know them a little bit better. I think it's important this far away from the election to start to get to know the candidates. It was a little bit more civil. Maybe it'll get less civil uh, as we go forward. Primary election in the state will be held on June 24th, 2014. In North Bethesda, for County Report This Week, I'm Lorna Virgili. Montgomery County Superintendent of Schools recently took on the issue of cyber civility, publishing an open letter to parents about the need for a community-wide dialogue on how we teach children to be safe and civil online. Dr. Joshua Starr wrote the letter in response to several inappropriate comments sent to him on Twitter the week he was deliberating whether to close schools after a snowstorm. You know, the reason I wrote it is because I was really startled at what some of our kids were saying online. And I felt like I have a responsibility as superintendent and also as a father to just get our parents to talk to our kids about it, make sure our adults and kids are talking about the need to uh, be appropriate and have some cyber civility. So I put the letter out there. I've gotten a great response and hopefully it's starting a conversation. So the response has been wonderful. I mean, people have been so thankful that I wrote it. They say, you know, I never thought about these kinds of things. Uh, I want to say it was not cyberbullying. Uh, it was just in instances of some Kids doing some silly things, you know, even really smart, wonderful people do some stupid things sometimes. Also this week, Superintendent Joshua Starr unveiled his recommended $2.28 billion budget for the 2014-2015 school year. MCPS TV has the story. This is a values-driven budget. Superintendent Joshua Starr released his recommended FY 2015 operating budget before the Board of Education meeting Thursday, December 12th. The budget recommendation seeks a 2.5% increase that will address significant enrollment growth, continue the work to narrow achievement gaps, and invest in strategic enhancements for future growth. My recommended operating budget is just a 2.5% increase over the 2014 budget and invests wisely and strategically. It is aligned and driven by our values um, and reflects the strong commitment Montgomery County residents have to our school system. The superintendent's budget also includes $11.8 million in strategic enhancements, including investments in technology, reductions in some high school class sizes, 
improving teaching and learning for English language learners, expanding community partnerships, and making improvements to student support services and alternative education. These increases are offset by 3.3 million in efficiencies and reductions, mostly in central services. Dr. Starr's recommended operating budget was built in collaboration with the three employee associations and from feedback provided by focus groups and from community members. An important process focused on building a budget to support student success. It's, it's quite difficult, but it also causes us to ensure that we're data-driven, that we're values-driven, uh, and that we are continuing to provide um, or allocate resources according to student need. The superintendent emphasized that his recommendation should be considered preliminary because the amount of funding from the state is unknown and the district is still negotiating new contracts with its employee associations. The budget will now be reviewed by the Board of Education, which will hold public hearings on Thursday, January 9th and Thursday, January 16th. The Board also will hold two budget work sessions in January before approving a final operating budget request on February 11th. For more information on the public hearings and the budget process, visit the MCPS Operating Budget website. New details have been released on the process for filling the District 5 County Council seat being vacated by Valerie Irvin. Susan Kennedy has the story. Susan? Sonia Valerie Irvin officially leaves her post here on the County Council next month. And the race to fill her seat has officially begun. Throughout her decade-long career as an elected leader, she is best known for being an advocate for those who do not have a voice in the political process. Irvin is leaving the council to become the executive director of the Center for Working Families, where she will expand her work on policy issues that impact working people. It is one that I believe will transition my work on the council to the national level because I will be advocating on behalf of working families across America. Irvin's departure becomes effective January 3rd. In the meantime, the council is considering applicants for her position. By law, the council must appoint a replacement by January 31st of 2014. Council President Craig Rice told us interested parties can submit a cover letter and resume to the council until January 8th. Anyone who is uh, not going to run uh, in the upcoming election uh, so has committed to saying that they'd be a placeholder, essentially, uh, for this that lives in District 5, that is a Democrat. Uh, they have to be of the same party. So those are all the state law regulations that correspond uh, to your eligibility. Rice told us the council will be looking for someone who shows a clear understanding of the issues facing District 5 and who is open to the residents' concerns and needs. He told us those key qualifications will be critical in the decision-making process. But in addition, we also want to make sure that they've got collaboration skills. Political involvement is always a plus, whether working on a campaign or understanding some of the nuances that go on with government. And of course, the most important is that they have the time. Several people have already expressed their interest in running for Irvin's seat next year. In light of this, Rice says the council will appoint a person who does not plan to run for election for that seat in 2014. With the primary being where it is in June, the reality is, is that a person who comes in and is appointed, let's say at the end of January, if they were running, would be solely focused on running their campaign and not focused on the work at hand for District 5. We also didn't want to give anybody one distinct advantage over another. Certainly as you're running as the incumbent provides you some sort of political advantage. Applicants should submit letters of interest to Council President Craig Rice, Montgomery County Council 100 Maryland Avenue, Rockville, by 5 p.m. Wednesday, January 8, 2014. In Rockville, I'm Susan Kennedy for County Report This Week. The Montgomery County Council has launched a redesign of its website. The new site includes information on legislation, master plans, zoning changes, the county budget, council news, and information about the nine council members. You can check it out at montgomerycountymd.gov council. When we come back, we'll review the year with County Executive Ike Leggett. Stay with us. County Report This Week is coming right back. Did you know there are more than 10,000 county government phone numbers? But there's only one number you need to remember for non-emergency calls, 311. MC311 is Montgomery County government's online telephone information system. Need information? Have a problem or complaint? 
Trying to locate a county government facility? Call 311. The call center is open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The website is available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Montgomery County High School and middle school students compete for cash in the Keeping It Safe Under 21 Alcohol Prevention Coalition PSA Contest. Middle school students can receive up to $500, while high school students can win up to $1,000. Entries must be 30 seconds in length. The message, prevent underage drinking. Entry forms and submission dates can be found online at montgomerycountymd.gov backslash KIS. Get your entries ready and remember to keep it safe. Are you sure they can recycle us, Clamshell? Hey, Dome, we're on a new recycling postcard. I can't wait to make a new start. Maybe I'll be a red carpet at a big premiere. And I'll get to paint the White House. Shh, here he comes. <laughs> now you can recycle more plastics in Montgomery County, including number one PET plastics, such as clamshells, deli containers, trays, lids, domes, and cups. Woohoo! We're in! For more information on recycling, contact the Montgomery County, Maryland Division of Solid Waste Services at 311. The wait is over. Recycle more plastics today. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Sonia Burke. Thank you for joining us. As 2013 comes to an end, County Executive Isaiah Leggett visited the studios of Radio America as the invited guest at the county's Spanish language radio show, Montgomery Aldea. During the half hour interview, the executive highlighted many of the accomplishments and challenges faced this year. Leggett mentioned that looking forward to next year, the county's priorities will continue to focus on transportation, housing, the public school system, and assisting the most vulnerable in our community. Redevelopment is a hot topic in Wheaton, where developers recently updated residents about plans for a town square. My MC Media's Valerie Bonk reports. At a meeting here at Wheaton High School, residents gave mixed feedback as developers updated the community on plans for a Wheaton town square as part of a plan to redevelop Wheaton Triangle. The difference between a town square and a plaza was up to debate as dozens of residents pitched in their ideas on what needs to happen in Wheaton that this is truly not a town square, it's a plaza. It will be sterile after dark. The county executive has said that this plan is supposed to bring people there at night. I immediately looked at it in a different light and said, why would I come here at night? And I don't really see any elements that do that. But those behind the project disagreed, saying that they're working towards a balance that would both attract crowds and bring new retailers to an area in need of redevelopment. We think it's a town square. We design it as a town square and hopefully it will, it will be a town square. Uh, we're going to make this location to be activated uh, at night. Uh, so the idea is not just putting an office building and close at 5 o'clock and becomes dark. The plan includes an outdoor entertainment area, retail space, residential units, and the Maryland National Capital Park and Planning Office Building. At the first two community input meetings, residents spoke out against the design for the building. Developers said this time they tried something new. So when you say that you really hate the building and it's a glass box like a downtown building, we've heard you. Some residents in attendance said that while the design is better, it's still not quite what they're looking for. I'm sure we can find some better exterior um, finishes for this building. I'm not sure if fiber cement board is it yet. If approved, construction is slated to start in 2016. For County Report This Week, I'm Valerie Bonk. County officials said they will hold more meetings to update residents throughout the planning process. Joining us in the studio to talk about fire safety is Chief Steve Lohr. Chief, what resolutions would you like to see county residents make for 2014? Well, I certainly want to encourage everyone to follow all the fire safety advice we provide year round, including uh, checking their smoke detectors, developing a exit plan from their residence, and making sure that uh, your batteries in your smoke detectors are fresh and that they're tested on a regular basis. This is absolutely your best defense uh, for early warning for any type of fire event. And what about fireplace safety? For those residents who use uh, fireplaces and wood burning appliances of any type, we notice an uptick as the temperature goes down outside. Uh, we have an increase in fires uh, countywide. And we, of particular concern is how people dispose of 
uh, their ashes, uh, and the other products of combustion. Never ever use a combustible container of any kind. Uh, the recommended practice is to buy a non-combustible container with a lid that limits uh, air and oxygen to whatever's left. Uh, people should be aware that these ashes, even though they appear to be out when you remove them from the fireplace or appliance, remain hot and can smolder for days. Uh, what we see frequently is people remove them to an inappropriate area against a combustible material like vinyl siding, like a wood or composite deck outside, uh, on a front porch, in a garage, and they believe that they have uh, done the proper thing and rendered these safe, when in fact uh, these things can smolder for days, ignite nearby combustibles, and result in a very serious life-threatening fire. For more information about any of these topics uh, we talk about, please visit our website. Chief, thank you so much for joining us today. During the holiday season, the Washington Regional Alcohol Program is offering a free cab ride service for drivers who've been drinking. Tom Pogue tells us more about Sober Ride in this week's transportation update. Hi, I'm Tom Pogue, a Community Relations Manager for the Department of Transportation. Here's an update for Montgomery County. This season, don't let a holiday celebration become a tragedy. Every year, more than 400 people are injured in alcohol-related collisions in Montgomery County. If you're drinking, designate a driver. If anyone in your party has had too much to drink, see that they get a ride home with someone sober or call them a taxi. The Washington Regional Alcohol Program, or RAP, is a nonprofit public private coalition formed to fight drunk driving. Through state, federal, and corporate funding, RAP operates a free cab service called Sober Ride. If you need a ride home from the district or surrounding counties, including Montgomery, call Sober Ride at 800 200 Taxi. Sober Ride will give you a free ride home up to a $30 fare. Since 1993, Sober Ride has provided 50,000 free cab rides to impaired drivers. For more information on taxi service in Montgomery County, go to our website at montgomerycountymd.gov. We're working to keep your holidays safe. When we come back, we'll tell you about why Senator Ben Cardin was meeting with local nonprofits. I'm Rockville 11's Jennifer Ligsay. Coming up, we'll tell you how the Glenview Mansion in Rockville celebrates the holidays when County Report This Week continues. In Montgomery County, nearly a third of pedestrian collisions occur in parking lots, and a significant number cause severe injuries. Avoid becoming a statistic. Pedestrians don't get run over. Walk first, text later, take out the earbuds. Don't assume drivers see you. Drivers don't run over people. It's illegal to hold a phone or text while driving. Slow down. Don't assume pedestrians see you, especially when backing out. Heads up in parking lots, because safety is everyone's responsibility. This message brought to you by FEMA. Home fires occur most often in winter. Keep anything that can catch fire at least three feet from heating equipment. And never use an oven to heat your home. Stay in the kitchen when frying, grilling, or broiling food. Turn space heaters off when you leave the room or go to bed. Make sure all vents are clear of snow and ice to allow carbon monoxide to vent outside. Have your furnace, heating system, and chimneys serviced each year by a qualified professional. Learn more at www.usfa.fema.gov. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Sonia Burke. Every December, Rockville's Glenview Mansion is transformed into a holiday wonderland. Rockville 11's Jennifer Ligsay joins us from the mansion with more. Jennifer? That's right. A tradition of the mansion for decades, Glenview's holiday open houses are getting families into the holiday spirit. 
For one out of the four open house Sundays, special visitors from the North Pole made an appearance for a crowd of curious kids with wish lists at hand. I'm going to ask him a few questions about his life. How is it at the North Pole? And I'm going to tell him what I want for Christmas. Each and every room of the mansion welcomes onlookers with their own holiday charm with unique trees representing the community groups who decorated them. We love coming out here every year, uh, Santa Claus, the Christmas trees upstairs, the arts and crafts, just a great time for the family and it really brings us into the spirit of Christmas. Oh, it's lovely. Everything has been decked out so nicely for Christmas, all the trees from local community organizations. It's a really nice event. There are two Sundays left for visitors to be able to catch the holiday fun. Be sure to stop by on December 22nd and December 29th from 1 to 4 p.m. to enjoy the decorations. We just encourage everyone to come down and enjoy what Rockville has to offer. It really is a, a great time. Rockville's Glenview Mansion is open to the public throughout the year and houses an art gallery and serves as the perfect location for weddings, private parties, conferences, and special occasions. For hours and more information, visit rockvillemd.gov Glenview. For County Report This Week, I'm Jennifer Ligsay. Senator Ben Cardin recently spoke to an audience of more than 200 representatives from Maryland nonprofits during a workshop at the John Hopkins Montgomery County campus. Senator Cardin thanked the nonprofits for their service and gave them some advice on how they can get more money from the government. We depend upon the, the nonprofit community. Well, the government's their partner, so we're here today to see how we can work better together in order to accomplish our mutual goals of helping communities. The event is the first of its kind and is a joint effort between the Maryland Governor's Grants Office and the Maryland Association of Nonprofit Organizations. The workshop was designed to help nonprofits find more ways to grow and give back to the communities they work in. It's not very simple, as you can imagine, because it has a bureaucracy tied into it. Um, but they need to know what the sources are and whether or not they can actually use it for the programs that they are looking for. Workshop topics included how to report spending, how to make sure funds are spent properly, and what to do to increase the chances of getting awarded funds year after year. I'm very optimistic uh, to see the number of people that are here, the organizations they represent. You can tell that they understand that, that government is changing, the partnership is changing, and they want to know how they can better access a government partnership so they can do the work in the community that is so important to strengthening neighborhoods. And for some nonprofits, the extra security comes at the right time. It, because of the, the issues that we're having in our, our government right now, with the sequestration and the uh, delays and budgeting on here, is that our nonprofit sector is in a wait and see mode. So you can imagine, it's sort of like you perform this work and you don't know if your paycheck's coming. That's kind of what's happening right now. So it's very uncertain and very stressful for the nonprofits. When we come back, we'll introduce you to our pet of the week. And tis the season to visit Brookside Garden's sparkling light display. Spring semester classes begin the week of January 27th, so register now to get the classes you want when you want them. Choose courses for more than 130 majors and programs offered at our campus locations and online. You can register today online or at any of our three campuses. Mayorga Coffee co-founder and MC alumnus Martin Mayorga has established the Mayorga Latino Leadership Scholarship at Montgomery College for Latino students who are business majors. The scholarship will provide tuition for one student per year over five years. And from all of us at Montgomery College and MCTV, we'd like to wish everyone a safe, healthy, and happy holiday season. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Sonia Burke. It's time to go to the Humane Society where Kathy Stanhope joins us with our Pet of the Week. This is Kathy Stanhope with your Pet of the Week at the Montgomery County Humane Society. And we are here with Toby. This is a very little kitty cat. She's very, very petite. She really probably needs a little fattening up and a lot of TLC. You can feel her ribs there, so she needs someone to come here and rescue her and take her to your wonderful home because she needs a lot of good treats and a lot of good loving. She's very sweet. She's just about two and a half. She's been here for several weeks, and she's ready to go home with you. Please visit us here off of Goody Drive in Rockville. 
at the shelter or visit, uh, visit us on the web at mchumane.org. You can also give us a call at 240-773-5960. We have a lot of animals who are looking for homes. And please also remember, now that it's getting cold and you might be doing something with antifreeze with your car or your pipes if you're closing up a house, antifreeze is very sweet. Animals love it. It tastes good to them for some reason, and it's very, very dangerous. It's lethal. Please be very careful to keep the antifreeze off the ground in the garage because one of your animals might get at it and it would be a disastrous result for them. So remember, whenever you're thinking about getting a new animal, come to the shelter first. We'll be happy to see you and help you with all your questions. Mark your calendars for January 20th, 2014. That's when Montgomery County celebrates the Martin Luther King Jr. Day of Service. You can find out all kinds of ways you and your organization can get involved in area service projects by visiting the Montgomery Serves website. Finally, we want to remind you that the Garden of Lights is open to the public at Brookside Gardens. Here are some details of what you can expect this year. This light extravaganza is more than a half a mile long and contains close to one million colorful lights. It takes the folks here at Brookside Gardens many weeks to put this exhibit together for families to enjoy. When do you start setting all this up? Starting in September, we start wrapping trees, checking the forms, make sure they work correctly, put them in, into the garden, and starting in November, right around Thanksgiving, the show starts. And then we run it through the beginning of January. The only trouble we actually have is sometimes we overload a circuit. <laughs> well, one whole row is out, and we were trying to figure out why. When you get a million lights all together, they all start to look alike. For you personally, is this, is this kind of neat to see all these families come out? I enjoy it. I know they're having a good time. Beautiful. Everything's so beautiful. I'm really impressed. I, I never really thought how much time it might take to do something like this. They're, they're gorgeous. They're just absolutely uh, yeah. beautiful. Uh, I've never been here at night, and uh, I can't believe it. I've seen them doing all the work here, but I can't believe they did it to this degree. Just all the lights and how much effort they put into this place. <laughs> <laughs> cool. You can have fun just like walking around with your friends and hanging out. So how old are you, Lewis? Four. <gasps> Four? And what is your favorite part of what you're seeing here tonight? I like the clouds. But they they just thunder on me. They thundered on you, didn't they? And what is your name, young lady? My name is Susan. <gasps> No. I can't believe it! And what do you like the best about what you're seeing here tonight? I like the sunflowers and the rainbow and the, um, the um, lights. The dragonflies over there. What made them cool? They were flapping their wings. Lights are like moving around. Now, there are those folks who don't really believe that the Loch Ness Monster exists, but here at Brookside Gardens, it's the real deal. I had just heard a lot of great things about it, and so we wanted to check it out for ourselves. That the girls are old enough to experience and understand and actually appreciate it. I like that one. You like that big monster right there? Mm -hmm. What do you think of all this? Is this so pretty? Yeah. <laughs> The Garden of Lights will be open until January 5th. For more information about admission, visit the Brookside Gardens website. With that, we close this edition of County Report this week. We invite you to check out our open data site where you may review and analyze all sorts of raw data. Visit data.montgomerycountymd.gov. We'd also like you to like us on Facebook. Join us again at this time every week for a look at what's going on inside Montgomery County. I'm Sonia Burke. Thank you for watching.